Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, November 3rd, uh, early in the morning. It's still pretty much dark outside. It's about 7 a.m. Uh, just going to get a little bit of work done, finish up the, the, the final side of the wing. It's got to be covered. Um, something happened that I knew was going to happen, and it's got to do with, uh, with covering with fabric. Is that even though I did shrink um, and get the uh, get the covering uh, as tight as I wanted to get it, once you put even the non-tautening dope, uh, because nitrate dope comes in two flavors, uh, it it comes it comes in a, a type that will there it'll induce more shrinking, uh, and the, the non-tautening does not. It's it, it does it's, it will still shrink a little teeny bit but not like uh, the dope that uh, is designed to shrink um, so what happened on the wing let's see if you can take a look and it happened up both of them and it's it's not it's not that critical you know it's disappointing but it's not that critical so hopefully you can kind of see it let me slide this back What it did is it pulled it in. It pulled the root rib in just a little bit. Um, it pulled it in about a sixteenth of an inch back here and about a thirty-second of an inch up front, or a little less than thirty-second of an inch up front. It's not going to affect anything. You'll see it only when the wing is off. When the wing is on, what's going to go up on the top up here, there's going to be a strip, the same plastic I'm using, uh, which is, I think it's a PET G plastic uh, for the windscreen and for the windows. There's a good piece that's going to wrap around the front, so it's going to be mounted onto the fuselage on the on the, the root rib mount, and it's going to come up from down here, from the bottom where it meets up with the fuse. It's going to come up around the top here and then lead all the way back to the tail. So once this is slid in, you're never going to see it. It's just it's just one of those things. That you know you, you don't really ever want to see happen, but there's a uh, the only way I can fix that would be to remove all the covering, cut all the covering off, uh, and then come in and put big reinforcements on the inside here. Um, and I really just don't want to do that. So knowing that it's not going to affect anything, and uh, I'm just going to let it go and uh, just chalk that one up that. You know, that's what happens when you're covering. Um, I've never had this on. I've never had that happen on any of my other planes, and it's possible um, that the temperature on this was just a little bit high. Because if you look at the other wing, so make sure I don't poke a hole in this. But if you look at the other wing, there is a little bit. There's just not as much. So let's see if I can readjust the camera. Not poke a hole in anything. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see that. Anyway, um, there's about a 32nd of an inch, like on this up front, but there's nothing back here. So. So I still have it. I still have it on this one. Now what I'm going to have to do is pay very close attention on the fuselage where I've got the uh, the little stringers running down the sides of it because if you tighten that up too much, it's going to pull it in. So what I'm going to end up doing on the fuselage instead of instead of shrinking at 250 degrees, I'll start out at 225. Um, and then maybe you know jump it up another 10 degrees maybe 235 and see how that is because I, that's the last thing I want to do on that fuselage is actually have the sides get pulled in so that you get this this wavering all the way down uh, that's a no-no so um, and that's gonna come up uh, you know let's just say tomorrow because I'm gonna get this done today and then tomorrow Saturday morning uh, I'm gonna have the fuselage in here and I gotta start the fuselage. I get the uh, sorry if you think the whole world's leaning. For some reason, my camera's leaning, so I'm trying to lean with it. Um, so uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna, let's, you know, we'll see how things go. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna video this because uh, you've already seen it. So I'm gonna get this done this morning, and then uh, you know, throw a coat or two of dope on it. Maybe even tonight I'll I'll throw a coat, a couple coats of dope on it. I'll just get this done and run off to work, um, and then uh, see you guys back in the shop in the morning. So see you tomorrow. Hey everyone, welcome back down to the shop. It's Saturday morning, November fourth. Uh, it's, I don't know, about 9 o'clock-ish. Um, it's raining again. Because um, I wanted to transfer some stuff upstairs. And uh, it's because of the rain. I'm not going to do it. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is behind me is the tail end of the fuselage. That's going to be the next thing that's going to get covered. Um, because I'm going to do a little bit of work. I ended up ripping uh, some balsa because... What I ended up doing to the wings, let me take you off the stand and show you. What I ended up doing with the wings, which was going in on the top of the ribs and fixing everything because I wasn't going to be happy with it. I, I ripped some, uh, some strips of balsa. And what's going to end up happening, I don't trip over something, I've got little spots where it drops down. So what I'll probably do is I'm going to come in, glue down a piece, it doesn't have to be full length, glue down a piece sand it in so I'm going to come through find out where these pieces need to go like right here there needs a little piece just to step up or if I just sand this down a little bit I'm going to fill this little teeny hole here um, I'm going to go ahead and chip that stuff out put it in I got to chip out this uh, the spackle here um, now what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to I was bringing this thing back in from, from in the garage area and I smacked it on the ceiling and it cracked one of my uh, glue joints. And what I did was, didn't realize, I must have done this a while ago, I glued this just temporarily with, with uh, CA um, and apparently I left it like that. So what I'm going to do is I ripped a little piece, I cut a little piece of Luan, I'm going to come in, I'm going to grind this out, make a little flat spot, come up inside it up off the floor but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little gusset in here so I'll re-epoxy this epoxy a gusset in so this will be strong um, and that's about it I've got a couple little things I want to try to clean up here I've got some of the, uh, the nitrate dope it started lifting um, so I'm gonna have to chip that out and figure out how I want to deal with that what I'll probably do is I'll come in and uh, uh, just wick some thin CA into this and then uh, you know fix it however I however I dare so it's uh, but this part this part's pretty good over on this side uh, just a couple little things but uh, yeah this is getting close so I want to have this covered today have at least a horizontal part covered um, where I can drop the uh, drop the elevator in so I'm going to do this stuff off camera because you because you really don't need to see um, me fixing that. Um, I'm also going to bring the wings in, uh, sand those, and then put their second coats of uh, nitrate dope on it. Do another sand and then that's ready to start with the fill, but I'm not going to start filling uh, the, uh, uh, the fabric until, uh, until I get everything covered. That way I'll mix up one batch and just start filling and then when it comes to put the aluminum paste in I'll do it all at the same time too so that'll just end up being uh, you know a, a day of just trying to get everything prepped for painting so so anyway let me uh, let me go ahead and as soon as I get that stuff taken care of and uh, uh, get ready to cover it I'll, I'll bring it back in so you can because I haven't figured out how I want to do it yet either, so I'm gonna have to take a good time time to just take a good look at it. I'd like to get this thing uh, fully covered by uh, tomorrow afternoon, so we'll see how things go. So I'll, uh, I'll bring you back with some hopefully good news. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shop. It's Thursday morning. Uh, I, I decided to. I've been thinking about something uh, pretty much for about the past day or so, um, and it's got to do with me. And my ability to overanalyze everything, um, because the most important question you always must ask is, "What if?" So anyway, what I'm what I'm kind of doing 
And this is just going to be for this morning, just to get it taken up. I just want to make sure it's pointing in the right area. So what I'm going to do is in this little area, where if you can see it, I'm hoping you can see it, right there. There's that little scarf joint that I put in there. Now, it, it is strong. It's a strong joint. Um, but because where the, the flying wires are going to go right here, it's just past it. Um, so any vibration set up, is going to it's going to be caught between here and here now this is probably going to be okay um over here um but the last thing i want to do is is take this just go in a flight and have this crack um and then just rely on on the aileron or the, the elevator and the hinges to hold it in place just until you land it so what i'm going to do I've already made my little piece that's going to go in there. It's a little piece of 16th ply. I'm going to come in and come at this angle. Sorry. I'm going to come in at about this angle. And then it's going to be expanded out to these, these pencil lines I put down. So that this will slide right down inside. And I gotta, I've got to, this is a little bit wider than the, than the, the the grinder disc um, so I'm just gonna have to move it back and forth and trim it so it's gonna take probably about a minute or so to cut that out and then I'm just gonna epoxy it in and what I did was on this side dropping stuff on the floor again and it's, I used a uh, I used a sharpie to put uh, a black uh, circular line around it and then when I spin it up you should be able to see if, you should be able to see that black line that's about it's about as deep as I want to go. It's not going to go all the way through. <coughs> no, excuse me. It's not going to go all the way through that piece of dowel. Um, but it's going to be deep enough. It's going to be about three quarters of the way through it. So then when this gets epoxied in place, that becomes part of that glue joint. And then I really don't think anything's going to happen with it. If, if nothing else, it'll at least, at least make me feel a little bit better. So let me go ahead. And the other thing I did too, got my little flying wire connector. And what I'm going to have to do with this, this is going to happen this, this morning too. I'll use the same little grinder. I tried drilling through, uh, through you know, spring steel. <laughs> you just can't do it. So what I'll do is I'll come in. I've got to make a little, a little spot for this screw head to come into. Um, so what I'll probably do is just come in, just like I'm doing here, and I'll cut out a little spot and grind it out, um, just so that this little screw head can cover it it should be fine if I really want to I can leave it the way it is and just put a little standoff uh, on the front and on the back and I could do that probably with just a washer and it, that would work as well too so just haven't decided how I want to do that yet um, but that'll be coming up uh, quite soon you know what I could even do if I wanted to take the same 16th balsa and just make that maybe I'll do that and then I'll just leave a little gap in the middle and just epoxy that to it. So that's a good idea. I'm glad you guys are here to help me out. All right, let me go ahead and get to grinding with the hopes that all will come out well.
the epoxy sets up all the way and I come in and sand it. There's what we're looking at. It's in there, it's sitting down, it's flush with the top. This, the fabric will get sanded down and then I'll uh, throw a couple coats of dope just in this area um, in hopes that uh, it'll last uh, It'll last and never break. You can see this side over here, that's where I put the carbon fiber in on this side. So I've got carbon fiber this side, ply on this side. I could have went carbon fiber on this one but with it covered I don't want to I don't want to attempt it where I'm going to blow out through the other side of it because the carbon fiber was a thicker piece and a little bit harder to to get in place but I'm happy now now I just I've got a glue joint going this way diagonally and this way across it so that whole joint should be locked together um, and this this will help any compression because I'm not worried about I'm not worried about a force this way. I'm worried about up and down. And with this, this will uh, absorb the compression in the uh, compression in the expansion uh, for the up and down on it. So that should be fine. And with my assumption, because I like doing that, that uh, that that plywood's going to be stronger than the than the dowel that's in there because the dowel that I had to make the uh, um, the repair with was not a good dowel from the from the United States. It was it was the Chinese light duty stuff. So anyway, um, or is it American? It doesn't say. So who knows where it came from? Could have been down in South America, uh, wherever they can get it cheapest from. So so anyway, all right. That's about it for uh, for for this morning. Got tomorrow off. I'll be back down here in the shop. So we'll see you in the morning.